a little bit more about the hypertext transfer protocol that powers a lot of these capabilities on the internet. So the first thing that we need to think about is the set of HTTP response codes. So every time you make a request to a, a website or to a server, you're gonna get a response. And there are five major categories of these response codes. You have 100 codes, 200 codes, 300 codes, 400 codes, and 500 codes. So some of these are very common and you're going to encounter them over and over again. Some of them are very obscure, but it is good to know the general category, uh, especially 200, 400, and 500. 200 basically means that everything went fine, we're good. Uh, and 400 basically means there was something wrong on the client side of this request. Uh, and a 500 means that something went wrong on the server side of this request. So things like 400 codes or things like uh, the client's not authorized, you know, that, that's something that's wrong with the client uh, part of the request. Whereas server errors tend to be something that went wrong on the server while processing a request. So it's good to have a rough idea of 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 codes, especially the 200, 400, and 500. Uh, some common ones that you're going to encounter, probably the most common one you're going to encounter is 200. Uh, and then another common one that you're going to encounter is 404, not found. Uh, I taught a web development class in, uh, in a room 404 once, and uh, that was always a fun time for everybody. Uh, lots of uh, lots of jokes on not being able to find the classroom. It was, uh, yeah, they, they, they never get old. Um, so a couple of others that you might see here, uh, 301 move permanently, 302 basically means just redirect, you know, so we're not going to, we're not going to always set the browser to redirect there. So found is 302. Um, 304 means that nothing has been modified, so we can just use a cache version if it's there. Uh, 400 is a bad request, and then 403 is, is forbidden, you know, so uh, 401 is, is not authorized to access that, but 403 is, you know, you, you actually don't, you, you can't access that uh, particular uh, URL or that particular resource. Um, 405, we haven't really talked much about request methods, but request methods are get and uh, get and uh, post typically, and uh, 405 basically means that that method is not allowed for that resource. Uh, you can have a timeout on the request, um, and then 500, you know, internal server error is is pretty common. Uh, sometimes 503 comes up in certain web application uh, frameworks if the if you have a crash or you have an error that, that exits the uh, the server. Um, 501 is not implemented, and then 504 is a gateway timeout, so a little different than the request timeout. Uh, you know, one one of these is more client, one of these is more server. So. We can explore a little bit more about these URLs. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and it has a couple of different parts. Uh, the first part is the protocol. Here you can see HTTPS. Uh, that means that it's the secure HTTP protocol. Um, and this is probably you know, the, what you're gonna see almost all the time nowadays in 2022. Uh, then you have a domain, and this is where you actually access the resource. So, um, you know, you might have a, a domain, several subdomains, but uh, typically the the main, like the name of your website is going to be here. And then you're going to have a path. This is just like a path on a file, except it's a logical path. It doesn't actually have to map to individual files on the file system. If you can remember a few lectures ago, we used a static files folder was the name of our, our folder on the file system, but we might use just static as the URL path. But they operate very similarly, especially when we're linking files you know, to either relative or absolute paths. And then we have a resource. So that's the thing we're actually trying to retrieve. In this case, it's some file.html, uh, HTML file uh, on the server. So URLs also have parameters. Uh, if you have a get request, the URL is going to have parameters with a question mark at the end of the URL, and then you're going to have uh, name value pairs. So there's going to be a name, and then an equal sign, and then a value, and then an ampersand. Uh, so this particular URL on this slide has a, a, a one parameter called name and another parameter called answer, and the value of name is Samantha, and the value of answer is yes. Uh, so we're gonna, this is a common way, especially uh, for, for sort of resources that you might request uh, to, to access um, or to, to send parameters to a server, uh, though we also often use the post request, which uh, doesn't put the URL parameters on the, or doesn't put the parameters on the URL. 
<clears throat> so like I said, there the two major request methods that we're gonna see are get and post. Um, the get request has the parameters on the URL, uh, just like the last slide. Uh, this is nice because then you can type the parameters directly into the URL, you can provide links or you can bookmark things that have those parameters. But often we don't want to make those so public. So with a post request, the parameters are within the body of the HTTP request. Uh, you're gonna see these most frequently. There are also head requests to, to just see the HTTP pattern, HTTP headers. Uh, there are put requests that you hardly ever see uh, for, for actually uh, taking or putting some uh, resource onto the server. And then there are delete requests. But you typically see, don't see uh, put or delete requests on uh, in, in the, you know, sort of the, the applications that you'll be building. So on the left, you can see what a get request looks like. Uh, get and then forward slash test, you know, and this is going to be the path, so it's, it might not just be a single resource. Uh, and then question mark field one equals value one, field, and uh, value two equals, or field two equals value two. So this is a get request. The parameters are defined on the URL. Uh, then a, <clears throat> a post request is going to have these as part of the actual HTTP request. <coughs> so you can see. Uh, here we have a host name and then we have some other HTTP headers with the actual parameters following. So that should give you a basic overview of working with URLs, working with uh, requests. We'll use all of this information in future lectures as we start posting or start processing parameters. Thanks for watching.